Good morning, agents. I wanted to start our new read aloud. We finished up with holes uh, last week and wanted to start something new and fun about economics. And this book is called Lomboy. It's by Gary Paulson. And it's all about a young man who learns um, some of the principles of economics through a birthday gift. Uh, let me just read the summary on the back for you. Lawn Boy by Gary Paulson. One day, I was 12 years old and broke. I set out to mow some lawns with Grandpa's old riding mower. One client was Arnold, the stockbroker, who offered to teach me about the beauty of capitalism, supply and demand, diversifying labor, distributing the wealth. It's groovy, man, Arnold said. The grass grew and so did business. Arnold invested my money in many things. One of them was a prize fighter. All of a sudden, I was the sponsor of my very own fighter, Joey Powell. That's when my 12th summer got really interesting. Gary Paulson's comic story about a summer job becomes a slapstick lesson in business as one boy turns a mountain of grass into a mountain of cash. Interesting. All right. So as we go through, um, it's a very short book. We should be able to finish it in a couple of days. But as we go through, the names of the chapters are a little bit challenging. And so we'll break down what each chapter means uh, based off of context clues. So you'll have to pay attention to that. The foreword. I don't have any clue how this will all end. There are people now who say I'm some kind of wonder boy or that I know some secret that I have this big, hairy plan. Nope. One minute I was 12 years old and wondering where I could get enough money for an inner tube for my old used 10 speed. I didn't have any money and my parents didn't have much either. My mom is a teacher in an experimental school and my dad's an inventor. Sometimes it takes a long time to work out a new idea. This was one of those times so we were a little bit broke. Mom and I have learned not to ask too many questions about what he's doing because if we do, he wants to use us as guinea pigs and we learned our lesson during what we now refer to as the voice activated door incident. Dad swears mom's nose is as cute as ever and I don't notice anything different about it, but she still touches it gingerly when he starts talking about some new idea he's got going. So what happened with the voice activated door incident? If mom touches her nose gingerly, like, oh, that hurts. Oh, what do you think happened with the voice-activated door incident? The next minute, it seems, I've got a business of my own with employees, and I'm rich. I'd better explain. It all began at 9 in the morning on my 12th birthday when my grandmother gave me an old riding lawnmower. Chapter one. So a foreword is to kind of set the scene and set the story up. But then we get into the story. So chapter one is called The Principles of Economic Expansion. So we know what principles are. Not like the principle like Mr. Reidenauer, but principle L-E, which means a rule or um, a standard. So the principle or rules of economic expansion, economic, economy. What does economy mean? Well, economy means money, how money flows in our system. The economy for the United States is how money goes from place to place. So if you went to, um, uh, or sorry, so you have a job and you get paid for the work that you've done, then you take that money and what do you do with it? You know, you might need to go to the store to buy some things. You want to buy a new toy. And so you go to the store and, and buy a new toy. And so you give the cashier your money. And the store gets paid for that toy that you purchased. Well, the store also had to pay for the toy to have it in their store. They had to buy the toy from somewhere, right? So they had to buy it from the factory. So they had to turn around and pay the factory for giving them or for getting the materials. It's how money flows through our system. So, you know, the, the factory gets paid for the, the material they they created, the toy they created. And then the workers get paid for the toys they created. Um, and the company has to pay for the machines that make the toys. So there's a lot of flow in the economy. And the economy is how that money goes from person to person to person. So the principles or rules of economic or money flow expansion. Expansion we know means to grow or to get bigger. So the rules of money getting bigger. This could be an interesting chapter.
My grandmother is the kind of person who always thinks that no matter how bad things might seem, everything will always come out all right. Her hair could be on fire and she'd probably say, well, at least we have light to read, bye. She's the most positive person in the world and amazing and fun to be around. But in a strange and happy way, sometimes she seems to be about nine bricks shy of a full load. What does that mean? Nine bricks shy of a full load. That's an idiom. If you're keeping track, remember, it's figurative language. It doesn't really mean what it says. Nine bricks shy of a full, a full load. So if she does she have her whole brain there? It doesn't seem like she's all there. You can say, you know, I think the Yankees will win the World Series again. And she'll answer, yes, but it's still nice to put carrots in the stew for the flavor. And you think that somewhere inside that brain, maybe a screw came loose. Then you find out that the last time the Yankees won the World Series, she made a stew and forgot to put carrots in and blamed the Yankees. Eh, she would never liked them anyway. When the stew tasted funny, she still doesn't like the Yankees. It all makes sense if you wait long enough, she says. So her brain, the way it functions, it's not how you would typically see. So when I turned 12, she came to the house with an old riding lawnmower in the back of her Toyota pickup. Happy birthday, she said. It used to belong to your grandfather. He was always working on it. I thought you might like it. Um, mower? Though we lived on the edge of what was termed an upper middle class neighborhood, Eden Prairie, Minnesota, our house was small, a fixer upper when my folks bought it four years ago. It had a yard the size of a postage stamp and the grass never seemed to grow enough to need mowing. It just sprouted, stopped, gave up and died over and over. My father and I lifted the mower down from the truck bed. A lawn mower? I looked at grandma. Thanks. My bridge club is meeting on Thursday night, she said, getting back into her truck, which makes it hard to watch CSI since it's on Thursday, too. Did you know that? And she drove away before I could answer her, much less wait for the part where it made sense. It appears you now have a lawnmower, my father said, smiling, as he walked back into the house. I don't know the connection with her bridge club either, although I'm sure there is one. She's your mom's mother. Maybe your mom will know what that meant. I looked at the mower. Very old, low, small. It looked like it only cut about a two-foot wide area, and it was nothing like the fancy new machines. The seat was steel without a pad. Excuse me. And the driver's feet went over the top of the motor to rest on two foot pedals. One was a brake, the other a clutch that you had to push down to get the mower moving. It steered with two levers, like a very small bulldozer, and looked more like a toy than a mower. Okay. Since I was 12... I didn't have much experience with motors. I've never even had a dirt bike or a four-wheeler. I'm just not machine-oriented. My birthday present sat there. I tried pushing it toward our garage, but it didn't seem to want to move. Even turning around to put my back against it and push with my legs, which I thought might give me better leverage, it didn't help. It still sat there. So I studied it. On the left side of the motor was a small gas tank, and I unscrewed the top and looked in. Yep, there's gas. On top of the tank were two levers. The first was next to a picture of a rabbit and a turtle. Hmm. Even though I'm not good with machines, I figured out that that was the throttle and the pictures meant fast and slow. Rabbit for fast, turtle for slow. The other lever said on and off. I pushed on. Nothing happened, of course. On the very top of the motor was a starting pull rope. Oh, what the heck, why not? I gave it a jerk and the motor sputtered a little, popped once and then died. I pulled the rope again, and the motor hesitated, popped, and then roared to life. I jumped back. Whoo! No muffler. Once when I was little, my grandmother, in her usual logic-defying fashion, answered my request for another cookie by saying that my grandfather had been a tinkerer. He was always puttering with things, taking them apart, putting them back together. When he was around, nothing ever broke. Nothing ever dared to break. Loud as the mower was, it still wasn't moving, and the blade wasn't going around. I stood looking down at it. This strange thing happened. It spoke to me. Well, not really. I'm not one of those woo-woo people or a whack job. At least I don't think I was. Maybe I am now. Anyway, there was some sort of message that came from the mower through the air and into my brain. A kind of warm or maybe a settled feeling. Like I was supposed to be there and so was the mower. The two of us. Like he was a friend. 
So, all right, I know how that sounds too. We'll sit under a tree and talk to each other, my blonde mower and me. Read poems about mowing. Totally whack. But the feeling was there. Next, I found myself sitting on the mower, my feet on the pedals. I moved the throttle to rabbit position. It had been on turtle. And pushed the left pedal down. And the blade started whirring. The mower seemed happy to give uh, seemed to give a happy leap forward off the sidewalk, and I was mowing the lawn, or <laughs> dirt. As I said, we didn't really have much of a lawn. Dust and bits of dead grass flew everywhere, and I, until I figured out the steering, the mailbox, my mother's flowers near the front step, and a small bush, they were in danger. But in a few minutes, I got control of the thing, and I sheared off what little grass there was. The front lawn didn't take long. But before I was done, the next door neighbor came to the fence, attracted by the dust cloud. He waved me over. I stopped in front of him, pulled the throttle back, and killed the engine. The sudden silence was almost deafening. I stood up away from the mower, my ears humming so I could hear him. You mow lawns? he asked. How much? And that is how it started. Hmm. Chapter 2, The Growth of Capitalism. So we know what growth is. Growth means something expands or gets bigger. And then capitalism. Hmm. What do you think capitalism means? Capitalism is kind of like um, business, how people want businesses to grow. So if someone is a capitalist, they believe that businesses should grow and um, they should be um, able to, to expand their businesses and, and grow money within their businesses. Okay, when it all began, it was simple. Our neighbor's house had a larger yard than ours with what looked like good grass, no difficult corners, just a big square with a large elm tree in the center. I mowed it and he gave me money, 20 bucks. Figuring out that I used almost all the gas in the tank, about a gallon, which cost $3 and not counting the wear and tear on the mower. Oh, I didn't even know how to figure that out. I made $17 for my work. It took two hours, so I made $8.50 an hour. So he took $20, he subtracted the materials that he used, the gas on the mower, which was $3, and then he didn't know how to cal calculate how the wear and tear on the machine, or you might have to give oil to your mower, you might have to replace the blade, things like that. So if it took two hours and he had $20, so 20 minus Three for the gas is 17. And then he took two hours. So 17 divided by two is $8.50. So he made $8.50 an hour. That's what he earned. That's what he made. That, I was to learn later, was called capitalism. So his business, he what he earns from his business. While I was finishing up that lawn, the next neighbor came up the block and said, how much to mow my lawn? Wow, another job just like that. I poked around in our garage and found an old three-gallon gas can. I walked to the station on the corner, bought gas, brought it back, filled the tank, and mowed my, the second guy's yard. And while I was doing that, a third man came and asked me to mow his lawn. The lawns kept getting bigger, and soon it was dinner time, and I had done three lawns and had made $60. And I had a small piece of scrap paper with the phone numbers and addresses for six more lawns. Turns out the man who owned the lawn service that had done all the yards in our neighborhood had done a bad thing and uh, lost all his customers. And all the husbands were worried about hiring a new company after what had happened. A kid like me mowing their lawns wouldn't be much of a threat, I suppose. Plus, I was cheap. Later, I would learn that I had tapped into something called an expanding market economy. All I knew was that it felt good to have all that money in my pocket. That evening, I took a rag and wiped the mower down, parked it in a corner of a garage, and a little admission here, patted it on the top of the gas tank. As I bent over, the wads of bills crackled in my pockets. Thanks, Grandpa. I never really knew my grandfather, but the mower seemed tough and friendly. Maybe it was like him. He had worked on it and used it, and it was nice to think of him as part of it. Then I went inside. A strange thing happened. My parents were getting food on the table, and as we sat down to eat, my dad said, that new film about astronomy is on at the IMAX. We, it would be great to go see it, he sighed, and I knew he was thinking about our budget. And there I sat, my pockets full of money. And I could have said, no problem, I've got money, and I'll earn more money tomorrow and more money on the day after that. But I kept my mouth shut. I could have said all those things, but nothing came. 
Somehow it didn't feel right for me to be the one offering to take us all to the movies. If I did that, wouldn't dad feel worse? Wouldn't it sound like I was bragging about how much money I had? I ate my meatloaf and green beans and then went to the living room and watched a little television. Or I tried to. I still had the sound of the mower in my ears, so I couldn't hear the set. And my whole body was still vibrating from sitting on the mower all day. After a few minutes, I couldn't keep my eyes open. By 8 o'clock, I was sitting on the couch, excuse me, with my head hanging forward, drool dripping onto my t-shirt, sound asleep. Mom shook me awake and sent me to bed, where I crashed onto the pillows, still dressed, pockets full of bills. End of day one with my lawnmower. And that was the easiest day. All right, we're going to end there for today, agents. Hope you're excited about Lawn Boy. There's so many fun things to do with it.